Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and this is Daily Faith. We have a program for you today. You are going to meet someone. My daughter Melody is going to let you meet someone who spent years, more than a decade, being abused in an orphanage. And grace found her, and you are going to be just so encouraged. I believe that today is going to be a day that you'll never forget. We are believing for your family, and we're believing for others that no one else cares about. And that's the whole point of this program. This is Daily Faith. Decades ago, I had a vision from God about household salvation, how to help people see their family saved. As we travel across America and preached in churches, some of the largest in the nation, a continual theme came up to me in, in, the, in people coming up after church. Pray for my son, pray for my husband, pray for my kids, pray for my grandkids. And that almost became a drumbeat in my spirit. And for years, I knew my story, and I didn't realize that my story would connect to so many other people's stories, that our family had been lost in alcoholism for over 200 years. I had no understanding at that particular time that my story connected to someone else's. And out of that revelation that I had, God began to talk to me about your family. Do you know that your family is part of your inheritance? that God looks at you and your family as the same, that his purpose is for you and your house to be saved. When I received that revelation and began to speak about it, the response was incredible. I wrote a book that you'll be able to get later on the program, and 300,000 copies of that one book was, was sold. But what I didn't realize was that God's always doing something and changing us from glory to glory. There's always the next step. I had no idea that he was preparing me to meet a whole group of people, a whole, a whole world that I, I, I had no idea existed. And that was the orphans, first in Romania, then in Moldova, and also in the Ukraine. And you are going to meet a young lady today in this program called Galena. How we found her was miraculous. One of those God things that only he can arrange to have you at the right place at the right time with the right person to nag you to go down a muddy road to find the helpless, to bring them hope. So I hope just in a couple of minutes when my daughter Melody comes and talks with Galena, you're going to just sit back and just bask in the miraculous of God. I have a book entitled Full House. It deals with the promise of household salvation. The name Full House comes from Rahab the harlot. How when the spies came to her home and she hid them and kept them, and then they said to her, what do you want? Whatever you want, we'll give you. And she says, save my family, save my family. A heathen pagan prostitute had enough sense to know that her family was the most important thing. And when the walls of Jericho fell down, all of Rahab's house was full with her family, and they were all saved. And my book is entitled Full House, because I want your house to be saved. So watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Cameron. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. 
This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. This book will change your destiny, I promise you. It'll change the direction your family will go in. I can't wait any longer. You have got to meet Galena Telescu, her name is. And just a few minutes ago, my daughter sat down and spoke with her. And she told the miracle of her life and how people caring made the miracle take place. Watch this. Over the last couple episodes, we've been telling you about the amazing young, woman, young men and women of the orphan's hands. And we thought today we'd give you a special treat and let you meet one of the girls who we met many, many years ago, Galena Telescu. Say hi, Galena. Hello. Uh, we met Galena over 15 years ago now. Um, me and Dad, uh, my little brother, our little brother Andrew, we all went to Moldova together um, on a, a Christmas trip. We were there to hand out gifts to several of the orphanages that we visited. And on one of our trips through, we came across this little sign on the side of the road. It was a freezing cold winter's day, white out conditions. And there was just this little blue sign on the side of the road that said, House of Children, that's what it translates into English. And there's a whole story of how we almost didn't go to this orphanage, but um, God made it so that we went down that road and turned down this hill um, into this little village and we came across this house of children, um, of lonely, abandoned children. And as I said, it was Christmas time and as we walked into this freezing cold, just as I think about it, the, the smell, the cold, and the sound of children singing in the background. And we asked the orphanage director, we said, what's, what's happening? What's, what's going on? Um, they said, oh, they're singing for Christmas. It's a Christmas celebration, a celebration. And they took us down the hall into this little room. And it's one of the saddest, most heartbreaking pictures you could imagine. On one side of the room was a group of children standing up. On the other side of the room is a bunch of children sitting in their seats celebrating Christmas together. No parents think about Christmas time for your kids at school. They spend weeks and months celebrating, getting ready their songs and their costumes and learning their lines. Can you imagine the effort that they put into this program? And no one shows up. But God brought us into that room in that exact time in that celebration and we celebrated Christmas with you guys. We were so we were <laughs> acting like crazy yes, people. We, we were did. so excited. We were clapping. We didn't know any of the songs that they were singing, but we were cheering you guys on. And um, as I said, we had been in Moldova giving out Christmas gifts and we had given all our presents away. So we come into this scene with these this heartbreaking room and we didn't have anything to give you guys. All I had was a, a pack of stickers. Oops. But we spent hours that night with stickers. We couldn't speak. We didn't have any way of communicating. But as we know, love has no bounds. And you don't. It's, it's a language all of its own. Mm -hmm. um, and that is how we came to meet Galina Telescu over 15 years ago. It was more like 20. Get very close, <laughs> gracious. But Galina, what, I've given our side of the story, as short as it may be, there's so much, so much more to the story, but give us your side of the story as these Americans walked into your life that night. Well, first of all, I thought you guys got the wrong address <laughs> uh -huh. because nobody ever visited that orphanage um, yeah. because it was in the middle of nowhere right and nobody would ever guess that in such a small village um, you know there is an orphanage mm -hmm. 
and I thank God for the doctor that begged Philip Cameron to turn the corner. Yeah. Um, I. It's like you can't really explain um, the feeling um, of you guys walking in um, because I've never seen anyone smile. Right. Um, because it was a state-run communist orphanage. You know, everyone, everything was by the book. And you and said that strict. day you received your first hug, is that right? Yes. Um, and how old are you? I was 14. 14 and receiving her very first hug. Can you imagine? It's unbelievable. It's um, seeing you guys laughing and just be happy for us, you know, um, because no one ever has really done that for us. Even though we had 50 workers in an orphanage, you know, they were there because they needed a job. They had to be. Um, they needed a paycheck. They, didn't, they weren't there because they cared about us. And to be honest, they were really treating us like orphans every single day. Yeah, tell us a little, a little bit about your experience, your life in the orphanage. Um, how the, you've told us all kinds of stories about how the workers treat you guys and the conditions of the building you lived in. I always say it was like a military <laughs> communist orphanage uh -huh. because it felt like that, you know. Um, you had to wake up at certain time, you had to make your bed um, certain ways and if it wasn't done properly, it doesn't matter if you were five-year-old or six-year-old, you know, or ten, everything had to be the same. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't do a good job, they would punish you um, to clean the floors for the whole orphanage or work in the kitchen for a week. Um, or punish you to not go for lunch, you know, things like this. Right, and when we, I remember when we found your orphanage, the walls were covered in mold. Um, they had wallpaper yes. on the walls, but it was, it, was, it was peeling away, and underneath it you could see the walls were covered with black, and the water was um, dripping from the light fixtures. They couldn't even turn on the lights because the, the light was seeping from the roof all the way down. It was four stories, I believe, that building was. Um, and this is what these kids were living in. Um, nothing that, that we would ever be allowed to keep our, our, our pets in. Um, we wouldn't even store our, our prized vehicle in a building, the state of what they were, what they were living in. And, and that's how we found you. Yes. And um, you had been held back in school because you couldn't yes. see. How, how old are you? You're 14. She was 14 years old in like sixth, sixth grade. You've been held back a couple of in fifth grade? Yes. She was 14 years, old, 14 years old in fifth grade. But the miracle of that is, um, had she progressed, had you progressed as, you know, people your same age, you would have been gone from the orphanage by yes. the time that we that arrived. That saved my life. Um, yeah. It's bad that the teachers and the workers didn't care, you know, about their health. Um, but at the same time, I'm thankful for that yeah. because I probably would end up, can't even say the word, yeah. I'd have probably ended up trafficked somewhere, you know, and I can't even imagine to have to go through that. But you weren't trafficked. True. You had somewhere to go. Um, Galena was one of the first girls that came into our homes that we have built for young, young women. Just like her, we had eight in our first home. And tell me what your life has been since you came in to be a part of our family. Um, it's been quite a journey. <laughs> Um, full of happy moments, of course. Um, I've never seen anyone that dedicates their life, you know, to God and caring so much 
about strangers. And yeah. so many girls and boys, um, we, when we came to the house, you know, we shared the same pain. And you guys were there to always encourage us and show us that there is hope. You know, we didn't, what we had to go through wasn't normal. And we can always change, you know. We could have a different life. And if we let the past go and let God do the healing. Amen. And as dad always says, it's our, our mantra. Um, if you were born, God has a plan. And I know you're sitting in an orphanage thinking, why am I here? Why am I alive? But God had a plan for your life. Very true. I, if you would have asked me then uh, where I would be now, yeah. and I don't know what, you know, I thought you're crazy um, because I never dreamed of having a normal life. Mm -hmm. um, And I've learned that to never lose hope, to always have faith in God and pray about it and ask him for anything because there's nothing impossible, nothing. Amen. Well, I know so many of you at home, even though your story might be a little bit different from Galena's, I know that so many of you have found yourself in a pit I thought, why? Why am I here? Why did I wake up another day? But let me tell you, if you were born, God has a plan for your life. There is purpose for you. If God can save Galena from a tiny village in the outreaches of nowhere in the Republic of Moldova, he can save you, he can save your family, he can save your husband, he can save your children. And I hope that Galena's story has given you a little bit of hope today. And um, we're gonna be introducing you to some more of these incredible, incredible people who God placed in our lives. And um, all I can say is that we walked, stumbled into that place that day, not knowing what God had brought us into um, but he placed need in front of us. And um, that day, um, his dad was worried that we didn't have gifts for those kids. God spoke to him and says, I don't want you to be there. I don't want you to give them gifts. I want you to be their dad. And um, all we could do was be obedient to the father and what he, um, what he had given us to do. And, um, it's the same for you. Um, a need is placed in front of you, and what are you going to do with that responsibility? And the building that Galena lived in, as we mentioned, was terrible. We, we rebuilt that and created a new, an entirely new building for the kids that lived there. But, so I wonder, God has placed a need in front of you. What will you do with that need, and how will you react? So continue to follow us as we... Um, introduce you to some more of these incredible young women, and I hope you enjoyed this interview today. Thank you so much, Mel. I remember that night like it were yesterday. I walked down this dark corridor and listened at the doors and heard the music and opened the door, and as Melody said, half, half of the orphanage were singing and half the, audience, uh, half the orphanage was the audience. There was a heavy woman sitting, sleeping, over in the corner, and a guy with a wheezy accordion playing music. It's the loneliest thing I've ever seen. These kids had spent weeks and weeks preparing a concert for nobody. Nobody. And when Melody gave me that sheet of stickers that that was all we had because we'd given all the Christmas presents away. We didn't even know this place existed. 
And I was sitting there thinking, looking at the, at the water running down the walls. They had an outhouse for a toilet. They had a shower that they would take a shower every couple of weeks in cold water. And I discovered that there was a hole chipped away in the wall so that the boys could look at the girls in the shower. And I sat watching, looking at this place that lonely night, freezing cold, freezing cold. And I said to myself, oh my goodness, Lord, we don't have even a Christmas present to give to these kids. And he said, I don't want you to give them stuff. I want you to become their dad. And suddenly, those lights became mine. And the no toilets in the building and no showers in the building became my responsibility. And the cold, frigid, cold radiators that my back was against became my responsibility. Remember the story about the man who fell amongst thieves? And the priest came and wouldn't even cross over to, to look at the man dying beside the road. You see, the priest had a reason. He was going to church. He was going to the temple. And if he touched blood, he would be unclean. And, and, and he reasoned in his own mind, well, if, uh, my, my religion stops me from helping him. And he kept on going. This is a story that Jesus told. Then a Levi came, and his job in the church was to pay the bills. He, he was the manage, management team of the church. And the man's lying, dying in the middle of a road, beaten nearly to death. And he hears the footprints of this man coming over. And he's looking up, trying to see him, but he can't move. And his face is covered in the dust of the road. And he says, please, mister, don't let me die like this. Don't let me die like a dog. And the Levi says, well, wow, you're in a mess, man. It'll take a lot of money to fix you. I can't help you. And he turns away and he walks away and the man is lying on the road saying, please don't leave me. Don't let me die like this. And the Bible says a good Samaritan came and got off his horse and went over and poured in wine and oil. Wine is, a, is, is an astringent. It's, it, it, it disinfects. Oil soothes and calms. And he put him on his horse and he took him to the inn and he said to the innkeeper, look, whatever it costs, here's money now, but whatever it costs to fix this man, will you, you go, I'll come back and pay it. And that night that Melody and Galena had told you about, we found a bunch of kids bleeding and dying. And it changed our life forever. And there are more. There are so many more of them. I beat myself up every day because we don't have the money to reach further and care for more. And you have the power to help us. One of the great needs we have in our ministry is monthly support. People that will save a life. It's so simple. Save a life for a dollar a day. For the price of a can of Coke. Less than that. You can help us find Galenas and lift them out of despair and sorrow and abuse and abandonment and stand them up and say, if you are born, God has a plan. You are not a mistake. And I want you to pray right now. What would you have me to do? Who will you be today? Will you be the priest who doesn't even care and doesn't go over? Will you be the Levi that goes over and looks and says, well, a dollar a day is a lot of money, and well, I don't know if I can afford to do that. Or will you be the Samaritan who identifies with the need and says, whatever it takes, I'm going to make a miracle happen. The address is on your screen right now. You can join us by becoming a, a dollar a day partner. It won't, it won't affect your life, I promise you. You won't notice a dollar a day. If you had a, 
a change jar in your kitchen, you could find a dollar a day. But if someone hadn't been giving when I went down that hill to that orphanage that night, Gillian Telescu would not be sitting and telling you her story. So I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit and the compassion of Jesus will come and say, I will be a part. I'll, I'll be one of those that becomes a monthly supporter of the orphan's hands. You will change a life if you do. It's your choice. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, Orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God help the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.